Hello, listeners near, far, and light years away. This is the Weekly What's Up. I'm Jay. I'm Wesley. And I am Damien. Here on the Weekly What's Up, we challenge ideas, provoke thought, and review various art forms from the filthy planet Earth. Coming up this week, we'll be discussing Siren Head by Trevor Henderson, Face Down Low by Dev, and Level of Concern by 21 Pilots. But first, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, that we, we don't have a sponsor, so let's just get right into it. All right, so we are starting with Bass Down Low by Dev, and I um, I haven't heard really what you guys had to say about this, but um, from the little bit you've told me, it seems like you're not not a fan, huh? huh? <laughs> hey, I didn't, Definitely I not. never said that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, okay. So but yeah, let's let's bust this open a little bit and talk about it. Yeah. Okay, Damon, do you want to go first or should I go first? <laughs> uh, I guess I can go first. Sure. I mean, uh, one thing that annoyed me was that Dev claims to enjoy fast beats, but the beat just seems to kind of drone on and isn't quickly syncopated at all. It's a good uh, point. The male singer makes a reference to Boom Boom Pow, <laughs> and as I was listening to the song, I was like. I would rather be listening to that right now. <laughs> uh, overall, it just seems like a generic backing track for a made-for-TV movie with a uh, scene that takes place in a club. <laughs> that's pretty spot on, not gonna lie. Yeah, that's pretty that, good. That's pretty much... Yeah, yeah. So, like, here's here's my first thought. My first thought when I heard this was, like, this sounds like the first draft of Fly Like a G6. <laughs> oh! Because it literally... It, it, I, I, honest to God, I think it is. I know that the Far East Movement sampled... Technically, they sampled... Uh, what was it? They sampled... For Like a G6. They sampled Dev's song, Booty Bounce, which... Mm, Dev... Wonderful titles for songs, <laughs> let me just say. Oh, yeah. Uh, but no, like, even in... In bass down low, it's literally the entire bass is just it's one note. I noticed that. Yeah, oh, okay. it's one yeah. note, just, and, and it jumps thing. up and down between an octave. But like, it's do 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 boo boo do 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 do. <laughs> it, it's it's the same kind of syncopation. But if you listen to Fly Like a G Six, Fly Like a G Six has the same exact rhythm for the for the bass, almost at the same pitch. It's upsetting. Except that one is do 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 do. It's literally it's almost the same exact one. It's just that they the Far East movement actually was like, you know what would make a bass line better if it had a melody, and like actually did it. But it just it it's yeah. I mean I'm Dev like found success at the age I think she was like 21 when she first started music, and to that you know what. You go, honey. You go, girl. <laughs> you you do that. But like, jeez, this song is, and Damien kind of put it very well. It just drone. It's the same thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Over and over again. It's just fodder for like club mixes and stuff like that. Yep. And it just, I got, I got sucked back to middle school, <laughs> and like the kind of, the the attempts that DJs would make at like my middle school dance for the kids they're like this is what the kids are listening to nowadays and would (laughs) like put on a couple of songs that were kind of in the sphere of of music it just oof oof flashbacks to elementary school terrible so like I mean, it's not like it's it's music and by definition it, it certainly is music I'm not like a club scene person myself so it's it's never been music that has like stuck with me but uh, it's, uh, it's someone else's cup of coffee I guess <laughs> and I, I have to say um hey Merlin you suggested this song and I know you're listening you little scamp look you have me questioning our friendship throughout this thing because I feel like <laughs> you did this to be cruel and you're not a cruel person you're not but listen buddy you had me questioning I have to say but now that it's over we can be friends it was just during that I <laughs> that I had 
And did, did anyone have anything nice to say about the song? I can't. I think feel of like anything. the DJ would follow this up with that one song. If we pretend that airplanes in the night sky, <laughs> they shooting stars. They're like, this one will get them grinding for sure. <laughs> Can we also? It's, that's that's my last thought on it. Can we also acknowledge? I don't know. I don't know if you guys know which, which part I'm talking about. It was like two minutes fifty seven seconds into this music video where Dev is just like manhandling this guy's bald head, and it was really weird. Like it was one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. Just upsetting. I was confused. I was confused by the bust of uh, Alexander the Great being destroyed. I know. What the heck was? <laughs> it was. So I think my weird. My favorite part, though, had to be the line, straight buzzing, robo-tussing, want to get your mitts in my oven. <laughs> yes, because... yes. And then it has the cut to the to <laughs> some guy with oven mitts. <laughs> that, was, that was almost masterful. Almost. <laughs> it, almost. Really, it was all you almost have to do, All you have to do to roast this song is just say what the lyrics are. Yeah, it's... No, it's pretty bad. <laughs> That's it. I, like, it just... Oh. I think like, they were clearly trying to go for some kind of and like I and I know Dev doesn't like to be compared to her, but I'm going to do it anyway. They like were trying to jump onto the uh, the Kesha train. Yes, that's who I like, thought of. Trying to be like I'm this trashy girl who likes to go to parties, but it's a character, and I'm like confident and I'm allowed to be the, like this. And it's like okay, cool, like live your best life, sure. But she just do, she do it bad. Are you telling me? Are you telling me that a Pitbull feature could have saved this song? Oh no! <laughs> you do not bring Mr. Worldwide into this conversation. <laughs> I <sighs> I respect Pitbull's Hustle. success, if I could call it that. But I swear to God, the man only knows how to say his own name and to trill his tongue, and that's it. I just it. <laughs> Like as, if I if I'm in a song and I hear in the background I just hear like <laughs> I'm like oh god he's here he's here <laughs> no and then he starts rapping and I'm just like okay hi pitbull goodbye pitbull what if his what if his ghost started I, haunting popular tracks with the tongue trill and the uh, third verse feature it's like I'm in the middle of listening to um uh it's not unusual and it's got like the da 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 and I was like, what? No, no, not here. <laughs> this was my safe place. No. This was my safe place. <clears throat> uh, what do you think the absolute worst part of the lyrics were? I, I don't uh... know if it had... Okay, like, I don't know if there's a, a place in the lyrics where it could be considered better than anywhere. Like, it was all on, all on a par with itself. Like, it... Like, just terrible like the whole way through i guess this is a, a fine place to start my rant unless anybody has anything else to add go no go, uh, go for one, it. one more I, thing one more oh, thing okay she asks if the audience likes when she flows and she doesn't follow up with any bars it's just <laughs> la 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 <laughs> yeah that's true that's the that's like the little yeah that's a fair point that yeah. that was the worst part for me i was like expecting something it's just like set herself up to disappoint everybody yeah <laughs> it's terrible yeah all right, all right just this yeah go like okay yeah here i'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> like this song gets stuck in my head okay like after hearing it, it gets stuck in my head and i i sometimes lose the will to live when it does the entire song consists of lyrics that are so uncreative it siphoned some of the creativity out of my frontal cortex to make up for it <laughs> during the bridge of this atrocity dev came so alarmingly close to music it scared her so she quickly backed off to resume looping the five seconds worth of pre-made electronic <laughs> sounds they lined up in their music software's timeline the sad thing is the song is actually pretty well mixed from like a quality standpoint you know and mm -hmm. I, I mix i mix music so i can tell it's actually decently mixed but the sheer amount of anti-creativity from these people makes it a monumental waste of everyone's time every time it's played anywhere in the world <laughs> i haven't seen time so viciously wasted since the mormon church tried to proxy adolf hitler into their celestial kingdom <laughs> It's that bad. If I were your parent, I'd forbid you from listening to this song. You know what? Screw it. Everyone listening, I'm your dad. I forbid you from listening to this song. It's for your own good. You are not allowed to ever listen to this song. 
<laughs> you made a really good point there about um sorry go ahead just like looping the same five seconds over and over. were you done was that it yeah i just needed to get that out yeah just uh, but like you said just looping the same five seconds uh, of music in their uh, in their um uh, right. music timeline but like this goes to show that um the the culmination of a song does not just exist in eight beats which is what this song <laughs> thinks is what happens because literally the entire and this is the same thing with fly like a g6 too because it's in that dun 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 that's all eight beats that's all it is and they just keep looping it and looping it and looping it phrases have a bigger part in the structure of a song and if you're going to use a phrase don't let it just be a a a a a a a mix it up god would it kill a couple of these electronic producers to study form or something like that yeah. like like i know that a lot of music now kind of follows an a, a um what you call it a modified rondo kind of version where it's like chorus verse chorus verse chorus bridge chorus <laughs> but like if if the chorus and if the verse and the chorus sound the same, it's not really chorus and verse. It's just a a a a a a a a the, the entire time. A, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you get one little B where she goes la la la, and like you said, you're you're like, she got really close <laughs> oh. to making music because she actually took a risk. But we can't have that in the electro pop field, I guess. Yeah, immediately yeah. backed off. She was like, "No, that was too much. I gotta go back mm-hmm. to what I'm good at. I gotta go back." Face I will down say. Down. Uh, um, I I think I think we were leveling a lot of blame at her, and oh, never mind. You know what? <laughs> what? I was about to say like you know she might not have been the one that wrote this because a lot of times a lot of these a, a lot of singers and stuff in the pop field don't like write their own songs they're just the voice that sings it yeah and there's usually like one producer or a songwriter that does it uh, the no word the songwriters is a stretch. the songwriters are the cataracts and dev so <laughs> yeah i wonder if they've studied music theory i don't think so i wonder it if they've listened them. to songs if they'd ever heard a song before it might have helped a song outside of a club. Yeah. Oh, let's see. There we go. There That's we go. probably the issue. They were like, oh, this is what I, I've heard about music my whole life. Is this what this is? This is great. Yeah. I, I can do to, that. I'm this close to referring to the cataracts as the um, uh, chain smokers of it's like synth pop. <laughs> Get a chain smoker song in in our review in the future, and I will rant. Just wait, <laughs> I will rant. I'll help you. Um, uh, music video, the jump cut repetition, fit the hypnotic tos- tones of the bass line. Like, I mean, that's a positive, I guess. They lined up the jump cutting to the bass. Yeah, I mean that that shows that they know that. The music video is supposed to go with the music, I guess. <laughs> to it, I think they understood that to a certain extent. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can call that near competence. Near. It's near. so near yet so far. Stress <laughs> on the word near. That's like the most important word in that sentence right there. I feel and like there's it's not no, even like, very I... near. It's like couple yards away and i do have to make mention i think like the reason why like the buns in the oven part like stuck out (laughs) was because it was one of the only scenes where one they took a risk and two it didn't take place in this dilapidated disgusting looking warehouse where people are just like twerking at really weird it's like is this where you spend your nights dev like i'm worried about you like actually worried about your well-being right now i think they found i think they found a warehouse and they were like can we shoot a music video in here and they're like, we're going to tear it down in two days. They're like, we can do like, it in, we, two, in two days. Like, we can do it in an hour. <laughs> we're not even worried about that. <laughs> what, part of oh, it also boy. looked like it was filmed in a subway. It looked like it was a subway. At least part of it. Am I wrong? Um, I don't know. I didn't see my $5 foot long in there. So Different, different type of... All right. <laughs> <laughs> a foot long, though. You really are rich. Walked into that. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Walked into that one. All right. 
Um, <laughs> are, are we ready to... I think that's a good ready transition Ready spot. to shift into the next song. Okay, so moving on to a song with a bass that's lower and a beat that's faster. Um, <laughs> Level of Concern by 21 Pilots. Uh, thoughts? Opinions? Critiques? Um, I felt like it was mostly forgettable. <laughs> uh, the... The singer comes across as super needy and completely reliant on the relationship that he's in. Whoa. As somebody who is really needy, I'm a little... Okay. Anyway, keep going. Uh, <laughs> let me think about this. Let me think about this. Uh, it just seems generic and poppy. I couldn't tell you the hook unless I listened it to it today, which I did thanks to the power being out. Uh... <laughs> The synth in the background draws on that retro shtick that's popular right now. I, like, just, when he's saying, I need you to do X, and you're not serving my purpose otherwise, is what seems to come across to me there, is how I'm feeling this song. I feel like he's, mo he's mostly just saying, like, I just need to be reassured right now. Hmm. Because I'm I'm feeling like I do think it's I, you know, that's all I had. You can go. <laughs> no, I think that's that's interesting that you say that. Um, I I was kind of looking forward to where I, I I would like disagree with um with somebody on on like one of the things that we're listening to. Um, I I genuinely I genuinely liked this song because oh. of um. It's, I mean, compared to what 21 Pilots normally puts out, and a lot of it is very, like, teen angst and kind of things like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. This And this song specifically was written because of the, uh, of quarantine and because of the um, uh, COVID-19 crisis going on right now. And I, I kind of, I, I liked the fact that they took it a step back and wanted to make something that was a little more I mean reassuring and a little calmer in that sense um and I think that's where they picked up the whole like yes it sounds like it has like that um kind of retro sounding um uh, like synth and stuff to it because that's what's popular right now and um but I think it's it's very it's like that kind of sound of music is also very calming um I guess what you what I mean if this if it were not for specifically the fact of it being made because of the crisis i could definitely like if he took out all the references to quarantine and to the pandemic i could definitely mm -hmm. see it's coming off as something really forgettable because it is it it doesn't really have a super strong hook it doesn't really have um like like i honestly couldn't tell you just off the top of my head what the hook was um, I thought more for the sake of like why it was written was something that was a little bit more touching than than anything else. I feel, um, I feel that. So it's like a time period thing, is what you're saying? Yeah, sure. It's it's because it's it's topical, and because it it it's being done now. Um, the temporality of the piece matters. Um, but I could see it being something that could slip easily by the wayside. Sure. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I can see that. And see, for me, I don't really like Twenty One Pilots all that much. They've got a couple that um, I kind of like. Um, I despise them. <laughs> like I, I like. Oh, I um, like the Spectrum. We need more Twenty One Pilots, so I can kind of oh, I can dote no. on them. <gasps> no, oh no. <laughs> and I, I particularly liked. You guys might not have, but you, do you guys remember the song they made for Suicide Squad, Heathens? I really yes. like okay. Heathens a that lot. That one. That one was all right yeah i loved heathens um and but and like that being said i actually really really got down to the song i mean it's delightfully catchy it's extremely well mixed and it, it's got a it's got a level of charm in there is it is it like exceedingly original no it's it's not i've heard of course like songs that are really similar and it's like in a very modern style you know like you guys mentioned um it, it's it, it's easy listening you know I, that's a really good way to describe it. Easy listening. Uh, it's it's on my playlist now. Yeah, like I really okay, like it. Yeah. I guess if I was driving around, I wouldn't turn it off. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I do. I do want to make mention of. I want to talk about like the just the music video a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, because I actually did kind of. I I liked what was going on with the music video. It it reminded me of. Um, have you guys heard of the band Postal Service? Yes. No. Okay. So as a as a, a quick little heads up before. Um, I uh, who was it that Postal Service turned into? Was it Death Cab for Cutie? Wouldn't know. I have no idea. Um, I, yes, 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 yes. I kind of like Death Cab uh, for Cutie, though, yeah. Yeah, so Ben, Benjamin Gibbard, I'm doing the Google right now, he started Death Cab for Cutie, but before Death Cab, um, he and his friend, uh, Jimmy Tamborello and Jenny Lewis, um, were in this band called Postal Service, and they called it Postal Service because the way that they did their music would be that one of them would write music and um, kind of like produce, and they would send it by mail to uh, Ben, and then Ben would record lyrics on top of it and create um, words to go with the music and send it back for mixing. So because the way that it was, because they did it all through mail, it um, that's how they they did all their stuff because this was also before Death Cab. This was in early 2000s. We didn't have smartphones or any kind of level of connectivity that was as fast. So the mailing service was how they did it. Um, that's fun. I like that. So that's why, like, seeing them pass off the USB stick from um, Tyler to Paul and their their respective uh, spouses and their and one of them i think tyler has actually has like a, a daughter who is in it yep um it just it, it was reminiscent of you know art can still be made even during these kind of difficult times which a lot of artists have been trying to do um and like choirs and stuff like that and bands have been trying to do have been trying to use technology to the best to to, to still share that sort of stuff um again it's a shtick that I feel like wouldn't have worked if it were not in the context of what's going on right now. Yeah, um, true. Um, definitely. It's definitely kind of a, a timely, easy listening piece. I did, I did like that. Um, I like the reveal that they were uh, neighbors. I felt yes. that that added the feeling of emotional distance. That was interesting. Yeah. Uh, if we're talking about the music video, though, uh. I thought it was kind of weird that he climbs on his significant other's back to place that star that could have been easily placed by her. It seems <laughs> like he's using her to shore up his on-camera appearance despite her caring for their child. Uh, at one point, she's flashing a flashlight pointlessly into just this room filled with flashing lights, and I can only assume that this was a ploy to try and give their child a seizure. <laughs> uh, so they can collect on the insurance. Yes, there we go. That's all. I don't know. I also liked that one line, I'm asking you to stay in my bunker beneath the surface. It's interesting because it sounds like it could have these two meanings where it's keep being my bunker, keep making me feel like I'm safe, or stay with me in my bunker and I'll make you feel like you're safe. Mm -hmm. So that was the one point where I felt like it was sort of reciprocal, but otherwise the entire song seems to be like i need you to do this for me so yeah tyler's dad dancing was the greatest thing i've ever seen in my life (laughs) that was pretty funny the the song itself um like lyrically and melodically it's like it's pretty repetitive um i mean it doesn't feel like it when you compare Mm -hmm. it to the last song we were talking about um Instrumentally, it kind of progresses in a really interesting way. Like it introduces uh, like new things, like right up until the very end, where it like introduced a new piano melody, like to finish off the song. Mm-hmm. So instrumental creativity is something I can really appreciate in an artist. And despite not really caring for the style of Twenty One Pilots, I have to say their instrumental creativity is pretty good. For the most part, they always surprise me with what they can do with just two people. Yeah, they 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 they've got some very out of the box thinking. So I can definitely admire them for that. Yeah, I respect it. Yeah, I respect it. I respect it. And for somebody that has made really repetitive music before, I can't like be mad because <laughs> I've made it before. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's well, fun. but I think like when you're when you're that level of professional, like 
repetitive music that is noticeably repetitive, I think can kind of is subject for um, some Scrutiny? critiquing. Yes, yeah. Hmm. Especially the last one. <laughs> we did. Just, the first episode is just we dunk on Dev. We dunk. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I feel like we got a lot more content out of Dev. Oh, yeah, yeah. we spent like 15 oh, minutes on Dev. We're going to be hearkening back to that, too, quite a bit, I think. <laughs> just, it's really, really... Just, oh, it's like... It was like disappointment. Like, that's what disappointment looks like, sounds like, on every level. <laughs> it's just so upsetting. And the fact that it was so popular. I hear it play in stores. Like, it it what? was a hit. Like, it plays in stores. Oh, yeah. Like, so mad. Anyway. <laughs> it's like, we're getting back to that again. A few more. <laughs> Let's go back to Dev. <laughs> I like because like as soon as I heard her say like um that the opening line of um <laughs> I can't even remember it because it's like it's so subliminal I can't even oh god like, I like my well, I, uh, I like my beats fast if you want to be low. with me yeah it's you, like got, you gotta weird. you gotta get with my lovers and turn the bass up yes that no, was wait. the song which okay like <laughs> like I I know that we're going back to dev and you know what whatever <laughs> screw it i'm gonna go back to dev so like the, if you want to get with me there's some things you gotta know i like my beats fast and my bass down low i feel like that's an innuendo right that's totally an innuendo yeah like, absolutely. she likes to get beat and she likes to get hit down low i oh i don't maybe i, I don't, don't uh well maybe <laughs> We have to re-listen to the song right now. Impact me with true. the bass. I don't want to hear it again. I'm not going to do it. You can't make me. Can't make me. Yeah, do you it. can't make. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do it. I would rather die. No. I need to. Hey, get hey my I dad. Do it again. My dad. You know what my dad told me? My dad told me I'm not allowed to listen to it anymore, so I can't. <laughs> oh, I thought your dad told you that he liked his bass down low and his beats No, fast. I think my 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 dad Jaden specifically said. <laughs> That you weren't allowed to listen to it. That's what I said, and I can play That's it back. Right. I can play right. it back. Hey, future play me it. editing this, play that part back. Play that back. Play that back. I told him to listen to it. Everyone listening, I'm your dad. I forbid you from listening to this song. It's for your own good. You are not allowed to ever listen to this song. We're forbidden. Absolutely. I guess I'm going to be the rebellious child and just listen to this song no, you're every not. day. You're gonna you're be the one. You're gonna be the kid that like locks himself in his room. You're like, you can't tell me what to do, Dad. You just play. <laughs> you don't really understand loud. me, Dad. You I don't understand me. Like this that. is real like music, Dad. Dad. Dad, you don't get it. Dev is a visionary, Dad. Oh Dev. no! Don't say yeah. that though. <laughs> Dev, Dev is too advanced for you. Go and listen to Fleetwood Mac. You just don't understand. To be fair. It takes a high IQ to understand many of the jokes in Dev's music. Uh, oh, oh my god. <laughs> I vote we move on now. Yes. <laughs> we just got stuck back on Dev again. It's going to keep happening. I It's going to keep It is. Happening. We're going to we're going to find a way for the next thing for it to come up. Oh yeah, and the next time that we're all on again. Yeah. No, it's gonna come back up. Yeah, guaranteed. Dude. Oh boy. Guaranteed. I already have the connection to the next topic. <laughs> God. Let's hear it. Siren Head likes his beats fast and his bass down low. No. Interestingly enough, Siren Head's physiology may contain loose tapes that store the audio that it mimics, manipulated by its anatomy, sort of like the producers of bass down low. <laughs> So they can just hit that repeat, you know. Over and over and over again. You heard it here, folks. Siren Head is actually cataract. I thought you were going to say that Siren Head ate Dev and now he just plays that song over and over. <laughs> but that wouldn't Siren lure Head people just in. consumes artists. That wouldn't lure people in, though. That's true. It they'd be, they'd be like, ew, what the hell is this? Yeah, and then they'd leave. You'd be like, oh, this sounds like stale 2010. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might lure in some people. Actually, it would it would end up like killing off all the people that like have bad taste. So maybe okay. we should feed Siren Head that tape. Yes, there uh, we go. What do you guys think? Good plan. I, I think 
<laughs> I think, Jaden, you should start off with talking about Siren Head. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, Damien and I have both had the taken uh, taken the lead rants. on the last two. Oh, yeah. th- that's okay. I, I got my rants and I'm fine. Um, but okay, so Siren Head isn't, he's an interesting character, right? He's one of those spook spook monsters that circulates the internet, you know, kind of like Slenderman did, right? Yeah. Also, he Slender. Can you believe Slenderman came out in two thousand nine? Can you believe that he's over a decade old now? Don't mm-hmm. don't you feel so old? Oh my gosh, I feel so old. Oh my god. So Siren Head is sort of like Slenderman on some very potent steroids, right? Lives in the woods, really tall, stands menacingly under streetlights, blah 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 blah, right? Um, he can mimic voices and alarms and radio broadcasts and all kinds of stuff to lure unsuspecting people in because if you were wandering around outside you would definitely want to head towards the sound of a tornado siren instead of taking shelter question mark um I, the mimicking voices thing could work but luring people in with a signal of danger just doesn't really make sense to me i'm gonna be honest oh i think i think the emergency sound is supposed to sort of cause that you know amount of chaos that happens during a natural disaster I feel like you can use that to capitalize on people's irrational nature. Mm. Maybe, yeah. Plus, he can kill en masse, either through, like, a sound that destroys soft tissue in the body or through other means that are unknown. Yeah, he's a jackass. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like his whole thing just is... He hearkens to sort of the inevitability of a natural disaster before they're understood and could be better prepared for. That's what I was getting from it. Interesting, interesting. Like that's where I thought the sense of fear was supposed to be coming from, even though I don't really feel it. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get myself into the head of someone who would be afraid of Siren Head, right? So well, I feel like can I can I step in here yeah, for a little for bit? Go for it. I think Siren Head missed its mark by about ten years, um, <laughs> because for me, it I mean, quite literally, the decade since Slenderman, because like the the online spooky monster thing and SPC like was kind of cool in SCP, uh, for some I reason. Is what you mean? What SCP? SCP. Yeah. Sorry, secure, protect, contain. Yeah. Se- se- secure, contain, protect. I'm sorry. I'm. Just, <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I'm sorry. I. Oh my god. I'm just trying to make sure people know what we're talking about. It's anyway, okay. My brain is spaghetti. Um, <laughs> I I feel like the internet kind of goes in waves of like what's popular and what's the cool thing to do. So I think like as like indie dev developers found it really really easy to create a lot of like, um, horror games with um accessible. 3D rendering software to make like really easy because like have you all played the Slenderman uh, like video games that were made? Yeah, like I played one where you have to collect. What's the, it was? Oh, the classic the one was. What's that? Slender the eight pages. You have to collect the pages. Yes. Right? Oh, you have to collect the pages. Oh, the that forest. was. Yeah. I remember high school me being like, <laughs> like it just at my <laughs> friend's house. We're like, let's play it with the lights off in the basement, and it There's was just. No way. Oh, it was. Oh, it, and like the the static and oh. That said, though, we've kind of reached, um, I, f- I think we kind of reached the zenith of, of that, and now we are in this, um, like, absurdist humor reality of, like, anything that appears on anything, any content that's created that's clever immediately gets funneled into, like, the meme sausage grinder. Yeah. And oh, that's, like, okay. literally... So, like, I remember seeing... Have you guys seen the um, the TikTok? Case in point, the, the dancing siren head. Oh, I was about to get there. Have you seen the TikTok, though, of the um, Doppler-affected um, oh, tornado the siren? tornado siren, yeah. Yeah, the... Oh, that? Like, to be fair, yeah. that gave me chills. That one was mm-hmm. really creepy, and that was the first one that I saw, and I was like, ooh, this is super-duper cool. But then I Im- the like, immediate next post was the same exact video, but it was Siren Based Head doing low. the... No, Gangnam Style uh, <laughs> dance, where he's yep. doing the galloping, and he's... Yeah. And I immediately yeah. was like, okay, it's not it's not scary anymore. Like, it was that quick to go through the grinder. Poor it, Trevor. Where it's like... Yeah, really. And <laughs> uh, we should probably make mention really quick that Siren Head was created by an animator slash artist called Trevor Henderson. And he definitely deserves, like, the credit. Because he, as soon as, like, it was stuck onto the the internet, I feel like 
like Slenderman kind of got ab- absorbed into the internet and just never like came out, which kind of I think added to the creepiness. Yeah. Because nobody could say like who started Slenderman, but like we know who started Siren Head and he deserves that credit. But I just I don't know. I I've never gotten into a lot of like the online spooky stuff. Like there's people who will go down the rabbit hole of Five Nights at Freddy lore and I just like sit here trying desperately to drool out both sides of my mouth evenly when I hear it because <laughs> it's just I I just don't get it. I don't get it. I really don't. I don't it's like it's too much lore for something that I feel like is like I don't know not really that scary. But that's just me. I don't, okay, I ranted now. So. <laughs> like, I was just going to I was going to ask what you feel about the uh lore the canon lore of I, Siren Head. I didn't know that there was lore until I looked it up and like we were going to talk about it. I had just seen that post and I was like, oh, it's cool. And that's, but that's the thing, like, does he need it? Yeah, I, I don't think so either. I don't really think that he like needs it. Because at least with like, at least with Slenderman, you had like Marble Hornets and you had these yeah. like series that were being made about it. But the Siren Head, all of a sudden people are like rushing to try to like create lore for it and Trevor's like, hey, <laughs> well, well, hey. Trevor's lore seems to be intentionally like mysterious, and I feel like that that's just kind of generic. Yeah, Trevor, uh, Trevor, like I've visited his page, and his art style is really eerie. Um, I really like it. Um, even not his Siren Head stuff, he's got a couple different characters, and as mm. far as lore goes on all of them, he keeps it very vague and and very mysterious. Which for and it's cliche, but for a monster like that, it's kind of what you want, because as as you know more about it, it generally becomes less scary. Yeah, well, and I think yeah, that's probably. I feel like that's true of Siren Head already. Once you kind of look into it, and he's apparently the physical form of this otherworldly being, you just kind of go. Well, Matt, I've heard that story a thousand times. And once you've seen him whip in Nene, he's really not that threatening. Yeah, true. Really not. And that I threatening. would, I would even argue to say because I'm just like I'm just scrolling around on Trevor Henderson's um uh page, just like right now, and I see several monsters that are probably arguably far scarier than Siren. Oh, Head. absolutely, absolutely. Just for the record, there are way scarier ones on his Instagram for sure. Yeah. Um, and like Siren Head is sort of scary, but like he's not. I don't think he's as scary as Slender Man. And he, he's he's kind of funny just because of the sirens attached to him. I don't, there's something funny about that, and the fact that his name is Siren Head is just really funny to me. Like I I don't know mm. why, but it's just kind of amusing. Like when I first saw Siren Head, I was like, oh that's weird, and then it said Siren Head, and I just started to giggle because it was funny. Like. Slender Man was was a lot scarier to me. Yeah, absolutely. I think he yeah he's just kind of an off brand Slender Man. That don't get me wrong. The the idea of a cryptid type that uses sound to lure its like unsuspecting people towards it, and especially like that that TikTok that we mentioned that was made Alex yeah. Howard's TikTok. Um, that was like creepy. that was really good. But beyond that, like, hmm. Well, okay, well, if you think about why Siren Head takes the form that he takes, there's two unconfirmed theories going around. One is that he's developing its camouflage to hide from something significantly stronger than himself, which I think is kind of terrifying if you take it at face value. And the other possibility is that his appearance kind of shifts and morphs because the human mind cannot comprehend his form. That's why you get the siren head with two sirens or the lamp head or the three siren configuration. I mean... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. It just... It takes so... It, it takes so much of my mental focus. To, like, I can't... Uh, you, you have to suspend your disbelief. That's the you thing. It's like, like, trust me, I'm a, I'm a theater person. I'm a skeptic. I know how to, like... Like I can definitely suspend disbelief on a lot of things, but this is just one of those things that I just can't. No, I just no. like at face, to... at face value, somebody somebody took like a, a zombie body and stuck <laughs> two two sirens on it. Right, that was kind of my thing. And he's also, I mean, some even like I don't, I'm not trying to rip into Trevor here, but I mean, even some of his abilities are the same as 
as Slenderman's, right? Because mm. Slenderman, mm. like, you know, blends into the trees because he's really tall, and it, Slenderman can at least change the length of his limbs to look more like a tree and that kind of thing. But it's it's really, it, I'm not ripping into Trevor here, but it's really, really similar. And so it kind of comes off yeah. as a knockoff. Mm-hmm. That's that's the thing. I will that's say really... a, point in, a point in Siren Head's uh, favor, though, does Slenderman put off 5G radiation? I don't know. I don't oh. think he can teleport. Siren. So Siren Head can give you coronavirus. <laughs> Confirmed. But, Sire... <laughs> but Slenderman gives you slender sickness. Can Slenderman Wait, what is that? play oh, you, oh, you Dead Space Down Low? I've true. Oh, I believe he can though. Oh, oh shit! You didn't right. hear about the slender sickness thing, huh? I didn't. No, Slenderman gives you slender sickness when he's stalking you. It makes you paranoid and, and all kinds of stuff. It messes with your mind. They call I'm pretty it... sure that's just called being scared. Yeah, but he's... Or being stalked. I get paranoid when I'm stalked. They call it slender sickness because it's a paranormal intrusion into your mind. God, don't you know the Slenderman lore? I really don't. Oh, cool. Was Doug Jones played him in the movie. <laughs> When's the Siren Head movie coming out? Oh, oh I was talking God. about the Slender Man movie. There's I know, I know, so but f- when is the Siren Head movie coming out? Probably, I oh, feel I, like p- probably after the Five Nights at Freddy's movie comes out. Am I going to have to bring tissues for those? Yes. <laughs> oh, it's boy. still in pre- it's still in like pre-production though, as far as I as far as I'm aware. <laughs> so, I see a lot of these like spook monsters and things that are created, and I love what. SCP yep. does with its creatures <laughs> and that and its writings and it's kind of and it's cool to kind of fall down the rabbit hole of looking through them. SCP but is But I cool. think yeah. I, I I don't really feel like it, it needs the kind of pomp and circumstance that it has around it. There is an artist who I follow, Stephen <sighs> Hold on. Hold on. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh no! Uh, no! <laughs> Why okay, did that okay. get me? <laughs> okay. So, um, have you? Do you guys know the Swedish artist? His name is uh, Simon uh, Stalinhog. Nah, nope. He no. draws. He draws a lot of super duper cool, um, like robots and um, uh, just like rural sci-fi dystopia Ooh. I think is like a really good way to put it I like, like have you guys played have you guys played inside yes think about that but as just like art Ooh. kind of similar to that he uses a similar kind of palette of um like at first glance you could mistake it for a photograph but it, it's super colorful and super cool um but his art, it just made me think of like his art i feel like really elicits that uh, like an emotion of of eeriness and creep but you don't necessarily see people just running to um make lore off of every single character that he makes um i'm sure one could if they wanted to but i just i kind of like that there isn't yeah huh. I feel that. We should, I should, check, we should come up with the term be... for uh, forced lore. For... What's that? Like, like, first, like, that forced lore that people project onto these things. Yes. I think it's really cool. Like, there's some things where he's written a couple of things. Uh, like, he's he's created books of art that have, um, that, that talk about the stuff that he's, like, drawn pictures of. Huh. Um... Because there's even this book, I think, that he wrote about some of these scenes. It's called, like, Tales from the Loop or something like that. I'll have to check out his stuff. What, what was his name? Simon Svenderhosen or something? Simon Stalin- Simon oh. Stalinhog. Stalin. I, Stalin. I was so close. And it does have, he does have, like, a fun little A with an overring. So, very Swedish. Very. I'm going to mm. pop it in our little shabloop. Ooh, wow. There's his Twitter. Thank you lovely um you've probably seen some of the art that he's posted before that'd be cool yeah 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 oh all right so any final thoughts before i close us out dev what are you doing (laughs) (laughs) i have to say for 
like despite Siren Head getting like memed like super hard by the internet, like there was a lot of stuff that um that came out of it. <clears throat> like in the um like in Siren the, Head doing the Fortnite dance. Well, that's well those are or the Siren memes Head doing I the Gangnam style dance to their, you know. But kinda... like what about the Siren Head sculptures and the Siren Head someone did a cosplay of Siren Head that was actually pretty cool. That's impressive. And then there were the like there were the games that came out, and then yeah. there was like there were a lot. I don't know if you guys are on the the creepy pasta scene, but I listen to those sometimes, and there were a lot of Siren Head creepy pastas that came out. So okay, if we look at Siren Head as the concept through which people are sort of projecting their creativity onto, uh-huh. I'd say it's a it's pretty cool actually. If you look at it that way, rather than I'm supposed to be afraid of Siren Head. Just avoid, like, sirens and random voices in the woods that are speaking gibberish. Shit. But they can sound like someone you know. That's my favorite. Speaking gibberish. It, yeah, exactly. Yeah. What it's it's like I'll be like, yo, it it's it's my boy, um, Brady, and Brady is in the woods whispering to me. And I'm like, Brady, what are you doing in the woods, you <laughs> scamp? You sound all distorted, like your voice is going through a PA system. Yeah, what's well, why is your why is your voice? Why does it sound like you're having a stroke? Why do you sound like you're forty feet up in the air? <laughs> Stupid. Well, I am sure that Siren Head still has the ability to crouch. True. Actually, and on the wiki and page, that was... on the wiki page, it says that he can run on all fours and get up to like 150 miles per hour or something, and that's terrifying <sighs> to me. I have my own lore, and that lore is that he doesn't have knees. <laughs> Maybe. Suck I mean, it, his head. physiology doesn't have to make sense to us because he's another world. He's an interdimensional being. Like Slender he's a Man. piece yeah, yeah, of yeah. creation of fiction. Nothing of it has to make sense. <laughs> no, you have to believe in the lore. You have to say, Siren Head, I can do nothing to stop you. So you know, that is why believe... I'm feeding you Dev and the Cataracts. To avoid my believe. own demise. Alright, guys. Guys, 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 wait. We should all make our own little additions to the Siren Head lore. Trevor, I know you're listening to this. Um, if you want to add this to the <laughs> official canon, um, go for it. Guys, what should we add to the official Siren Head lore? Uh, do we each get to, to add something? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. One of you go first, I can't. <laughs> it's the dead silence that followed that. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so something something that sticks out to me is that nobody really knows what happens to his prey. Right. So I'm going to assume that he can take someone and absorb them, sort of absorb their knowledge and their abilities. So that way he can finally become one with Dev and the Cataracts. It's the only way. And it's unknown as to whether he's a singular being being created by multiple otherworldly beings as a sort of collective consciousness, or I don't know what the or is. I guess I if have... it's like a standalone being. <laughs> or he's a standalone yeah, yeah. being. Okay. There, there's that going on. So what I would like to think is that Siren Head is the unwitting subconscious of every human on this earth working against themselves I think Siren Head (laughs) listens to the Bee Gees after it eats to calm down (gasps) that's it okay solid solid that's my lore by the way I use my walk I just imagine it like reclining in the middle of like a forest of trees and it's tummies full from all the people it's absorbed and he's just listening to Bee Gees and just chilling I think my lore add-in would be the reason there hasn't been a Half-Life 3 is because he ate Gordon Freeman. (sighs) See, he was created in the Black Mesa Laboratory and then busted out, and Gordon Freeman tried to stop him, but Siren Head was like, nope, (laughs) killed him. Can we get some some, concept art of that with him wearing the jumpsuit and carrying a crowbar? Please, please, please. Please, please, please do not ask our listeners to draw Half-Life <laughs> 4. 
<laughs> oh, but no, it'd be beautiful. No, it wouldn't. No. Please. We can skip. We can skip Please. right over three and four and jump Please. to Half Life Four. I am begging. I I am begging. This is episode number one, and we have already thought into creation things that should not be. But that I mean that's that's the best way. You gotta you gotta like oh. utilize your reach. You have to get I... your ideas out to the people. And what the people need right now is Gordon Freeman being eaten by Siren Head and Siren Head sort of taking on this form of Siren Gordon Head. Siren Gordon Head. Okay, you you guys can draw Siren Gordon Head, but I don't want any of the process, you hear me? <laughs> he gets sucked want... right up into the Siren Head. Please, God, no. With the teeth mashing and the... Okay, at least it's through the Siren Send Head. Send it to our Twitter. No, please, God. <laughs> yeah, <I do. laughs> please. <laughs> please. Oh, God. You guys want to wrap up there? Yeah, I think absolutely. We're good. It's I think we're good with Simon. With with oh, God, I can't even repeat it. <laughs> Siren Gordon Head. <laughs> Siren Gordon Head. I think we're good with that. All right. Well, that brings our review of this week's selection to a timely end. Thanks for joining us here on the weekly What's Up, and until next time, this is Jay and the rest of the crew reminding you to keep producing art so we can keep making fun of it. If there's anything you'd like us to review in the next episode, you can send it to contacttwwu at gmail.com or tweet us at the What's Up cast. Huge thanks to my co-hosts for joining me this week. You'll find their social media sites in the description below. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Guys, now that it's over, how are we going to review ourselves? Oh no! Oh, that should be like the like hundredth episode is we oh, review ourselves. Oh, no. <gasps> or that could be more bonus content. Is that we we have co-hosts uh, review other co-hosts' episodes? I'm gonna get trashed. Oh my gosh, it's like so meta. It's okay. I'm also gonna get dunked on. It's alright. <laughs> you do that, I really it's have like, to urinate like... because this cheap wine is going straight through me. Okay, you know what? Can I? Can we take like a five minutes so I can just use the bathroom <laughs> as well? Because yes. I also have to do that. All right, cool. That's fine. One second, That's Jaden, we'll be right back. <laughs> and then we can do the outro and, and I'll finish my thought. Okay, I feel like this part is staying in the episode. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, blooper reel. Oh, the, the, at the end, right? Yeah, right. Alright, I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh well it's just your boy here left all alone now um just uh filling in the time I'm gonna go back to um I'm just gonna talk about uh, bass down low here for a second just cause it just infuriates me to the point of mm, I don't wanna say violence but yeah, sort of Bass Down Low is an incomparable steaming heap of garbage that has been left out in the sun for many, many years, and it did not age well at all. In fact, the longer garbage sits festering in an old dumpster the worse it gets and that's kind of how this song has progressed throughout the years it just has mm, it's like you know how wine suppose i hate wine but you know how wine is supposedly gets better with age this song is like the anti-wine i just uh has been speaking to the viewers about life. Oh, really? Yep. Totally. Totally didn't so, go on another three-minute rant about bass down low there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like if someone wants to write a Dev and the Cataracts fan fiction oh God. that crosses over with the Siren Head concept 
I feel like they would really combine in this sort of symbiotic mm-hmm. parasitic way in which you know one feeds off of the need for attention and capitalizes on that by murdering people right and they both do it in this repetitive way where they're just playing back you know what they've sort of heard or come up with I feel like that would be fantastic and I should be featured as a character I think so and then we should send it off to Mr. Creepypasta so he can narrate it yes it's great I'm sorry (laughs) it's okay (laughs) (laughs) we were just discussing having an uncut Patreon episode uh, the one with like where there's no uh, there's no edits. Yeah. Yeah. Some people prefer it uncut. It's true. Mhm. So all that, including my three minute rant about <laughs> Dev when you guys left, would be left in. There. Go- oh, dude, you ranted more. Yeah, I, I got upset again. Oh no! I just started. I just started thinking about it. <laughs> he was left alone with his thoughts. Yeah, you guys you left. See, you... That's what... he was left alone with his thoughts, and his thoughts gradually drifted to Dev. Because it's Naturally. been getting stuck in my head, and Merlin, I hate you. It's okay. He just likes his bass on low. You don't have to. Yeah, that's. It's just. It's just the bass. Yeah, just the bass. Just the bass. It's fine. I'm still mad.